Hi everybody, I'm Elliot Polite with GuitarEdge.com. I'm here at the wonderful Blackbird Studios, a place that actually was fortunate enough not to be affected by these horrible Nashville floods. But we are here with Stone Sour and the recording of their 2010 album release. Come and check it out. This album is a big responsibility. Like people are gonna shit their pants when they hear this. It's amazing. That's why we're trying to go for an endorsement with Depend. Under Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Oops, I crap my pants. Oops, I crap my pants. It holds up to a gallon of feces. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. Trying to pull in some more of the seniors too. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we're going for that, you know, fifty to eighty. We need a demo. Demo. the demographic. Kind of like we're the magazine industry. They're the only people that you buy CDs. We got to corner that geriatric market. Is the amp that I guess in the recording process that you find yourself kind of gravitating towards, or was like that blow away amp for you? Because I saw like a clip and stuff in there as well. And yeah. Well, we did basically. We used almost every amp that you see in there, but for main tracks, we stuck to like our two. We would use a PCP and blend a couple of amps together. You know, like I'm using um, an Uber shawl that Reinhold modded for me and a Rocker Verb 100. Josh has got. Uh, my Hughes and Kettner and a Gorilla Combo. <laughs> Damn it, you stole mine! I like, tracked all my shit with the Gorilla Tube Screamers. Uh, for guitars, it was uh, Harmony. And uh, no, actually, it was Hughes and Kettner for me and, and Ampeg, uh, the VL, or the, yeah, VL 502, <laughs> Lee Jackson from the early. 90s. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's cool, you know? No, 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 no. Now, that, that Reinhold mod, do you know what that mod was? Was it a KT88 uh, he mod? Even, he doesn't even know what it is. Really? What happened was we were doing a record many years ago with an, another thing that, that we do, and mm -hmm. he came to the house that we were recording at, and he brought this ugly brown amp. Mm -hmm. And I had two Uber shawls that I toured on the first Stone Sour album with, and then... Um, He's like, J just give me, give me one of your heads. Take this one. Try this head, you know. And, mm -hmm. and um, we put that head in, and you know, with the engineer filament that we were using on that record, it fucking it made the entire record. You know, it, it sounded great. It had like a bright switch in it. Mm -hmm. He said he tightened up the low end in it a little bit, and all this, and maybe had a different mid sweep in it or something. And he came back to the house, and I was like. If I if I give you my other Uber shawl, can you do this mod that you did to this Uber shawl to that Uber shawl? And he's <laughs> like, I I don't even know what I did. I'd have to take it apart and look at it. And you yeah, know, and he's yeah. Back. Can you tell us about the tracking hats? That's <laughs> 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 twelve bucks that Nick ever spent. Yeah, yeah, that was his biggest contribution to the record. Right? <laughs> 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 No, but honestly, without those tracking hats, we couldn't have made the record that we're making right now. I mean, that, that was the <laughs> most totemistic. I'm backing it. You know, I'm backing it. It was basically, it was basically to kind of lighten the atmosphere a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, sometimes we kind of forget that this is fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Between those hats and his shorts, yeah, <laughs> it didn't get more weird. <laughs> I, yeah, I did half my I did half my vocals with that pig hat on. Yeah, and the, the best thing with the, those hats with a U forty seven in front of them. Oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> real nice. And they came out. You guys were gonna go with Nick. What was the, the the you know the process of going like well Nick? I mean, other than the fact that Alice in Chains record was phenomenal sounding, um, what was you guys' decision? Well, I mean, was what a, what made that? Of, there was a lot of things going on at that time. You know, we we were questioning what we should do. Mm -hmm. We were questioning whether or not we wanted to try to do uh, and. Uh, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but we, you know, we don't want to do come whatever may too. And you know, knowing what we know now and how how our process works, I mean, there's no way we could do that anyways. You know, it's just 
I think every record we make is going to be an evolution of the previous, you know, just for that sake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe maybe we got a little pee shy when it came to, you know, there were certain things that, uh, you know, he didn't want to change us or do anything different, but I just, at, at the at the heart of it, I just didn't feel like it was time yet mm -hmm. to go to, to, you know, to go to a guy like that. And, you know, there was a comfort level and there was something that we knew that was going to happen with Nick, you know what I mean? And it just, it just felt right, you mm -hmm. know? I'm not saying that, you know, we're, we wouldn't go back to said producer who I wasn't going to say his name, but I... That who shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. He was a really, you know, at the end of the day, he was, he was really cool. Yeah. You know, we met with him a couple times and it was one of those things that, you know, it, at the end of the day, we got to go with our gut, and our gut was just saying, you know what, this doesn't feel right, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the same reason that Ozzy left Rick Rubin when he was making No More Tears. He was like, you know what, we have a different opinion of the albums that we want to make, you know? Mm -hmm. For us, this was the album that we wanted to make, and it really didn't make any sense to spend one more minute trying to convince somebody else. So, you know, and luckily Nick came right in and was able to, you know, get right there. Plus, it didn't hurt that we already had a relationship with Nick, you know? Mm -hmm. We knew his vibe. We knew that we could work with him. So we, we could really get a kind of a, a head start on everything. An another big thing with it, and, it, you know, for, for what it is, is we, we've got these schedules that we have to deal with because we've got these small windows of opportunity to work with when you're trying to juggle a couple different bands. Mm -hmm. And... You know, we were having a hard time trying to line up the schedule that would work out for when we could finish so that, you know, in what, less than three weeks, we're going to be on stage in Germany or yeah. about three weeks, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there was a possibility that had we used we'd still be fucking demoing and tracking yeah. as we're demoing and writing, you know what I mean? So We have a responsibility to how we do things. We have a responsibility to our fans, we have a responsibility to each other, to our families, to do the right thing for us, you mm -hmm. know? Um, we knew we were going to make an incredible album, you know? But at the same time, we also knew that we're the kind of band that we want to go out and we want to work for it. And putting everything back, because, you know, pushing everything back because of confidence issues from whoever d wasn't going to work for us. We knew what we wanted to make at the end of the day. Nobody's going to make our music for us. Mm -hmm. So to delay that and, and try to cater to somebody else's will would, 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 would just be throwing a wrench in our lives. You mm -hmm. know, We don't work like all these other industry douches. You know? mm -hmm. We make music for us. If it happens to be great to other people, that's great. But at the end of the day, we've got to live with it. We're not going to make somebody else's album. 